Hello, everybody. Uh, you already know who I am, but today I'm joined by a special guest, Alex Murray. Uh, he's been with OETP for, what, like a year and a half now? So thank you for joining me. Uh, I'll uh, let you introduce yourself. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, my name is Alex Murray, also known as AZ Axel, to the community at large. I've been working with OETP for, yeah, you're about, right, right almost about uh, two years now. It'll be two years come January. And um, I am currently the tech support manager for Out of the Park Developments. So uh, I guess we'll just get right into the interview. Uh, when did you first become a baseball fan? This is something I've been wondering for a while. I know oh, not everyone is born one, um, but I'm curious if you were. Um, so uh, baseball for, for my family is mostly because of my father. Uh, my dad, I don't even know if it was really his it, my grandfather, his dad, that got him into baseball or not, but um, my dad was big into baseball. Um, I don't think he ever, like, played it competitively at any level or anything like that, but uh, that was what we were raised with. I mean, I, my, my parents, uh, I'm, I'm one sibling out of seven kids, so um, we, of course, needed to burn off a lot of energy, and there was four of us older siblings are all boys so you know we had lots of time to go out and play and do stuff and so we we ranged all different kinds of sports um we, we played soccer we played um I think we played a little bit of tennis growing up we would play uh, a little bit of football we didn't really get into like basketball or, or, or football that much but um but baseball was the one that we all just loved because we had a big enough backyard that we could actually play it and um and that was just something that my dad instilled into us was just a love of baseball. And it was a perfectly timed situation for us because of the fact that, you know, we're, I'm from Arizona, native, born and raised Arizonan. And, um, you know, right at the, around the time that I was growing up, you know, baseball came to Arizona uh, and on a professional level. Uh, and on that note, uh, which teams are your favorite and why? Oh, gosh. So I like underdog teams, but I also like teams that are really good with developing their players, unless they're the Dodgers, and then I just don't understand them, so I choose not to follow them at all. So teams like the Oakland A's are, are huge for me. Um, of course, my two loves are going to be the Rockies and the D-backs. It's just because I'm a West Coast person, and I can't subscribe to any of the California teams. So, of course, I'll pick you know Colorado, and I'll pick Arizona. Um, but I also love teams that, again, try to do a lot about their development. So like the Marlins, I actually like the Marlins a lot. I think they actually have some pretty good development now. Um, you know, I love the Twins. I love what they've done with some of their development. Uh, big fan of the, um, the Indians to an extent for that reason alone. Um, if you have a good development farm system like the Rays, sorry, Rays are a good example of that. I love the Rays. I, I, Oakland A's and the uh, Tampa Bay Rays are probably my favorite American League teams outside of the maybe Seattle Mariners. So I've got wide ranging um, likes and dislikes uh, in terms of baseball teams. But if you develop players and not just shoot for, you know, free agency and signing players, uh, you're, you've got my uh, support. So I take it you're not a Yankees fan then? Well, actually, I mean, hats off to the Yankees. Their development system has gotten a lot better uh, over the past, I'd say, like 10 years or so. I mean, they've actually developed some very good players. I mean, Volpe and, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and Jason in their minor system right now is, is a great double duo. That should be a solid combination for them, but they've got to get some pitching. But, um, Yankees fans, like I can't stand the culture. The Yankees culture, I just can't get behind. But their organization as a whole, very respected. I, I respect them, but I just don't like them. I think that's certainly a more than fair stance to take. What do you joy uh, enjoy about baseball the most, and why? Oh gosh, that's a good question. Baseball is, um, I mean, it's. I, I I truly believe that it's still America's pastime sport. I I think it's um. I, I'm, you can have discussions about whether or not it's aged well or not, but um, I think baseball is still by far um, one of the most respected sports in 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 the world. Um, you know, there's there is a sense of you know there needing to be not so much like a moral code to the game, but you have to have a standard 
for yourself um, to play the sport. And that's not to say that you can't have egos or stuff like that. I love seeing, you know, the kids, let the kids play approach and everything, but you can't walk into the sport and, and, and be a, you know, a douche and expect to get away with it. Um, baseball players, baseball fans, and even, you know, baseball's, you know, ownerships and the, you know, people who, who run it just, there is a level I've, I've, I've expected this out of people, but there seems to be a level of, um, almost like an entry level of requirements that some of the other sports in America just don't really um, seem to push for uh, football and, you know, and basketball to an extent as well. Just, it seems like as if you can kind of get away with more stuff than you can with baseball. Um, but I just love the game and how there's also not, a, not even a, so much a moral issue but um just the fact that almost anybody can play baseball you've got you know you don't have to be a certain height or a certain build even though that helps um you know you can still have your david Eckstein's playing you can still have you know the really small kids playing and you can you can still have good success uh you don't have to be you know six foot two or above to be able to play and Otherwise, you're pretty much just not going to be able to do it. So I love that. I love the sport because it just has a wide range of characters. Um, but it's just it's just so much so much more fun to me personally than a lot of the other sports out there. I definitely agree with a lot of uh, that. I am interested that you went down the morality uh, road. I don't hear that one very often, but you definitely do see baseball holding people accountable a lot more often. Uh, which concession is the best that you've ever had? Food, drink, oh, snack, gosh. anything? Okay, so, I mean, Arizona really hasn't jumped full on the bandwagon for food, although it has recently. You know, we have the churro dog here in Arizona. We've got some cool stuff, but... You know, growing up, I always remember there being more of a focus on like uh, we had Cold Stone Creameries in 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 uh, Chase Field early on, and that was really cool. Um, but you know, I mean, the earliest memories I have of good food at a baseball stadium would have been uh, Bank One Ballpark back in like 2002. I think my parents uh, somehow managed to get us um, invited to like a suite once, and uh, we got treated to the giant uh caramel apples which had all the candies on the outside that was like the first memory i have of like being wowed by food at a ballpark was that and that was you know <laughs> now by today's standards that's extremely minimal um you know i've been to uh to coors field i've been to the party deck which is the right field bleachers top of the right field bleachers where they have all the um the restaurants and the the bars and everything i went there when i was uh, about 24 25 and that was fun that was a lot of fun to be able to actually like almost have a restaurant slash bar approach to a baseball game i mean a lot of people would you know look at that and go like oh that's kind of gimmicky but then when you experience it for the first time you actually see it and you're just you're so high up um (laughs) not not you know not that kind but you know what i mean um when you're you know enjoying good food and good drink at a you know mile high elevation it is a different experience than you know eating hot dogs and peanuts in the bleachers or you know on the first level I agree. I have found, by the way, that the 200s are the best uh, section for food at Chase. Uh, Just my personal opinion, they have a lot of the best vendors there. Yes. Yes, yes, they do. Chase has gotten a lot better. Like, Chase has actually gotten to the point where if you know where to look for the food, if you know, like, the the sections that are really good, you can get some good stuff at at Chase Field now. It's definitely improved. Yeah, I agree. Uh, And... On the note of Chase, which stadium, in your opinion, is the best in baseball? It can be based on whatever criteria you want. Oh, man. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit uneducated because I haven't been to a lot of the different stadiums. Okay, So I've only been to, I think it's three stadiums. I think it's just three still. I've been to Petco. I've been to Chase, of course, and I've been to Coors Field. Um, PNC is a great ball field. I know it's gotten a lot of raving reviews for being one of the most gorgeous stadiums out there. I know that for me personally, Washington Nationals Park is also on my list of like places that I really, really want to go see, as well as uh, Camden, Camden Yards for the Baltimore Orioles. That's on my list to go see if I can one of these days. 
those are the three stadiums that I think could change my mind. But out of the stadiums that I've seen, or at least have enough information about, Coors Field is by far the best stadium I've ever been to. Just the atmosphere in terms of it being, you know, so close, so close to the mountains. The weather is almost always pitch perfect for for baseball. Um, and then the atmosphere of the fans. The, the, the weirdest thing is that, you know, as you know, as bad as the Rockies can get, they almost sell out, you know, like half of the season every single year because the fans just are that hungry for baseball. And that atmosphere breeds just an excitement and um, just a connection to the team that you just really don't get uh, in a lot of other stadiums. I think that's the one thing wrong with uh, with Chase Field is that even though it's a really you know good indoor stadium for what it has to be, it's just it feels empty and it feels void every single time I've gone. Um, unless it's like you know opening day or it's you know a playoff atmosphere, then it's ridiculously impressive. Um, but it's hard to keep that up when your fans are only going to come out for playoffs. So Coors Field's my favorite at the moment. I definitely agree. Watching Rockies TV is so much fun. Uh, they are definitely my favorite team within the division because those games, it doesn't matter how bad the D-backs or the Rockies are, are always so much fun to watch. The fans are exciting. The ballpark's amazing. There are a lot of beautiful scenes as well. And yeah. uh, the Rockies are a very entertaining team. So Coors is a great park. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good stadium. Uh, if you could play professional baseball for any team in any era, who would it be? Oh gosh. Um. So uh, uh, that that requires me to come with the idea that it's the ideal version of myself as well. So I mean, either catcher or center fielder Alex gets to go play at a team at what I think would have been my ideal ability to play in the majors. Um, probably 2018 Rockies actually. Um, that was a team that won, what was it, 20, 92 games? 92 games, finished uh, second in the West, I believe. We ended up beating the Cubs in the wild card game and then got completely crushed by the Brewers. But our um, our center field position that year was Charlie Blackman, and that was right after his injury. Or was it before his injury? I think that was right after his injury. He was still really good, but he was not a center fielder. And the team desperately could have used um, a good center fielder. I mean, you know, you can mention people like Willie Tavares. Um, you could have done, you know, Juan Pierre type kind of players. Anybody who had the speed to cover center field would have made that team, you know, so much better because it would have allowed them to, you know, put Charlie back in right field or even over into left field. And it would have been really, really fun to see how far that team could have gone with the pitching staff they had that year if they just had been able to shore up a couple of positions. Cause um, I think that was, um, uh, I think that was, uh, that was the year. I think we had uh, Ian Desmond at first base, I believe. Yeah. That 2018 year was really strange. I think that was the season that we had like two divisional ties and then a play in for the wild card game or something ridiculous like that. So Maybe you could have got that team into first place in the NL West. I'm pretty sure that the Dodgers were even with the Rockies that year. So that would definitely be an interesting scenario to replay. Yeah, that would be fun. I think we did finish like a half or a game behind the the Dodgers that year. It was real close. Came down to the wire, but we couldn't pull off that season. We still have never, ever won the National League West just because of that. Yeah, it's... Uh... There were some really good Rockies teams in those late 2010s. They were a very interesting one. So moving on to more out-of-the-park related questions. When did you first get into out-of-the-park, and how did that happen? So I first got into OOTP when I was about 15, 16, I believe, 16, 17. I think the year was uh, 2010 when I first heard about uh, OOTP. I was in... Uh, I just, uh, I think I was near the end of my high school years at that point, but, um, I had been playing, you know, MVP baseball for a long time at that, at that stage. And, um, there was only so far you could go with MVP, uh, especially with the Oh five game and the mods that you could do, you know, five years after that game had been released, it was, uh, it was hard to, to look at that game and, and think that it was high quality anymore. So, I ended up finding OOTP. I think it was either by a Google search or a forums or something. So I found OOTP through that. And um, um, 
and uh, just was able to really get used to um, just, well, I'm sorry, not get used to. I was able to see screenshots of it and was able to uh, buy it on their store at that point and fell in love with the game. Uh, what were your first experiences with the game like? I know a lot of people struggle out of the gate. A lot of people uh, have a learning curve. Uh, that definitely includes me. So what was that like for you? I'm sorry, say that question one more time? Uh, what were your first experiences with the game like, essentially? I, I know a lot of people have a learning curve. I certainly did. So how was it like for you to get into the game? Did you have a hard time at first? Did you enjoy the game? Yes, I, I loved the game. Uh, it was... Um... Um, it was one of the, I mean, how do I describe it? When I first started playing, there was a, a lot that I was missing from the game, but I loved envisioning where the game was going to go. I, I loved some of the different parts of the game that I knew I could just already see were going to be down the road so much better and, um, you know, really encompassing everything that I wanted uh, the game to look like down the road. So I could already tell when I first got that game that um, that it was in a good position to succeed and it was in a good position to be everything that I was looking for in, in, a, in a baseball strategy game at that time. And on that note, you said you were looking forward to a lot of things. Have those things come around? Yes, a lot of them have come around. I mean, back in 2010, the game didn't have a lot of the really cool features it has today, like the 3D engine and, um, you know, the really diverse ability to create multitudes of leagues and, um, you know, just a lot of the features that we kind of take for granted today. You know, if you go back and try to play OOTP 11, a lot of that stuff just isn't there. It, it's just, it, has, it hadn't been made yet. So I loved being able to um, see just where the game, you know, I could, I could just, again, I could, I could see where the game was going to be taken. And it was so much fun it was such a great experience to learn how to play the game and then watch it grow over time, uh, you know, and, and be there for most of that ride. Yeah, you definitely, I mean, even looking back at 21, you could see the game has come a long ways and the developers do a great job improving it version to version. Uh, yeah. Did... I mean, I, I remember going back to, sorry, I tried to interrupt you about, but uh, going back to like OOTP 19, even from that version, um, We've done so much just since then. And with the addition of even, you know, Perfect Team, uh, it, it's been able to really expand the player base. And now we get, uh, you know, a whole bunch of new players. And that helps us even more be able to reach out to other people who never would have found the game that way. Yeah. Uh, how did you originally get into content creation? So content creation for me started with twitch actually I, I mean i i have a youtube channel but i don't really do much with it so for me it was um it was starting with twitch being able to uh stream otp on my own um back when i was not working for the company or had any association with otp as a as a business but um being able to stream what i loved which was developing leagues doing fictional stuff custom creation that was really really cool and um you know i I loved being able to show people the game on my streams um, and just be able to to um, just uh, ex let other people experience the, the, the joys that I had with the game. That's definitely a great way to go about it. I know that that custom lease stuff, and you still do it today with even Backyard Baseball, uh, that is something that a lot of people can go into as their next steps once they sort of master the game, being able to build those new universes and uh, expand their horizons. How did you come to work for OATP Developments on the message of content creation? So I actually applied for the job back when it was um, put out in January of 2019 at that stage. So it was um, probably because of the fact that at that stage, we had been looking to expand. Um, right, not we. I, I know the OOTP was doing uh, content creation, and they were doing their Twitch stuff at that point. They were getting started with all that stuff, and they had made the Discord. And um, the Discord had come out, and I had applied to... Well, not applied, but I think I had been asked to be a moderator for the Discord back at uh, late 2018, I think is when that happened. And... Um, 
became a, a big part of the community through the moderation team uh, through Discord. And, you know, when they opened up a position for tech support help, I was able to apply for that and was one of the, the people that got tagged to uh, to assist with the tech support. That's that's how I got started with OTP, basically. I wish it was a bigger, better story, but that's about it. I, I, I applied and uh, because of all my experience with the game and the community, uh, I, I was a good fit for it. Well, I think it is uh, definitely a great story because it's less about necessarily the direct application process and uh, about your story and history leading up to that point with the game, everything that you had going for you to get into that position. Uh, what is a typical day of work like for you doing the tech support role? I wish it was something that I could say was like you know fancy and and um, really really fun, but you know a lot of it is just um, getting up each day, responding to to tickets, making sure that any direct messages are you know addressed. Uh, and people's, you know, concerns, questions, interests are, you know, responded to. Uh, and, you know, you just <laughs> it's unfortunately kind of just a daily grind approach. You, you just you have to keep moving forward with all the, you know, people that have questions and the concerns and, you know, addressing them all. And, um, you know, and, and working working to, to get any and all issues resolved. It's it's um, it's not flashy. It's it's not. Um, it's not the front and center jobs um, that other people have, but it's a good one, and it's the one that helps the back end of, uh, you know, the backbone and back end of OTP work and function and and really drive the comp drive the uh, the game forward. It definitely is uh, a job that is essential to making sure everybody has the best experience they can with the game, and I think there are a lot of people out there that appreciate you and what you do for the community. Well, thank you. Uh, it's it's um. Yeah, and again, it's not a, it's not the glory job, but um, somebody's got to do this. And um, you know, there's there are there are good days, there are bad days, more more good than bad. And you know, we we um we try to make the game as best as we can through the efforts and work that we put in. So you know, keep giving us your guys' feedback, keep giving us the issues you guys see, and we'll keep working on fixing all of them. What kinds of projects have you been working on lately for the game? Uh, either your own individual projects or projects for the company hold on one second <laughs> i'm getting messaged to as well at the same time so again more more tech support stuff so i've done a lot of cool projects in the past i know you guys are aware of some stuff that we have done um in terms of you know the lead creations for some of the streams that we do um there are some things that uh Nope, one second here. Sorry, I hate to do this to you, but... Uh... Totally fine. Uh, obviously, what you're doing is very important, so uh, be sure to make... Uh, uh, be sure to take care of whoever you're dealing with, yep. uh, definitely. It's just that when people start to get to me and they start giving me questions, I gotta... I gotta make sure I double duty some stuff. But, um, yeah, some of the projects that I have done, you know, we've done, like, the baseball america prospects league uh, we did that on the twitch channel so i was the person that helped set up that project for for you no know, for the people who streamed that and you know i i end up doing a lot of that kind of stuff for some of the just the back end work because i know the game so well and it helps you know be able to do jobs that otherwise other people have to do in 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 um and, and that can you know free up some sp some time and some space for other people to to manage to do some other stuff. So a lot of it revolves around, you know, for the past product we've done, it's been about lead creation, editing stuff, um, and being able to just get people set up to be able to succeed on our live streams, as well as, you know, any other types of stuff that we do with, uh, with any other uh, people who come to us wanting to do articles or other stuff like that. Uh, and... Lastly, when you play OTP for fun, what does that usually look like for you? What franchises do you like to play? What's your play style like? Just anything that you do. So for me personally, a lot of my uh, play style for uh, for OTP, when I do have free time to be able to enjoy the game as uh, as it being fun, either revolves around a lot of fictional leagues. I love to do custom fictional leagues where there's large amounts of you know either promotions, relegations. Historical, not historical stuff, but, um, you know, lots of uh, leagues that range from foreign leagues to uh, 
to tournaments, to utilizing a lot of the features that the game has that are a lot of fun to be able to uh, to play with and just to enjoy and experience. Um, I also love doing a lot of theme standard starts where I'll take um, an approach to a team or I'll take an idea that I have about a team and then I try to implement it and see if it would actually work because there's a lot of teams out there that are you know, trying to make decisions about whether or not they're rebuilding or if they're going to come through and try to, you know, go on all out and win it this year. And being able to just throw an idea at the game and see what the results come back with is a lot of fun. You know, in terms of like, do we rebuild the Cubs this year? Do they go all in this year? You know, for the Rockies, that was whether or not they could have gotten a better deal for Arenado. Um, answer is yes, they could have. Um, not easy, not, not, not hard to say that that answer, unfortunately. But, you know, I love being able to just throw ideas at the game, you know, in regards to real life teams and see if those ideas work, you know, and what could potentially go wrong. And, you know, the game is real good because it's so accurate. Um, it's a really easy way to be able to bounce ideas off the game and then get feedback immediately without having to, like, you know, talk amongst yourself or talk to a friend and be like, well, what would happen if the team had done this? You know, you can actually do that with our game. You can say what happened if the Rockies had kept Arenado instead of, you know, getting rid of him to the Cardinals this off season. What happens if, you know, the D-backs don't have all these injuries and what if they're actually contender for the season, you know? Um, what happens if the Giants don't quite do as well as they were expected to do? You can, all these what ifs are, are perfect examples of how the game is such a great, great tool to be able to uh just to bounce ideas and uh and themes off of it i absolutely agree um that's something that i used to do a lot more often but it's kind of fallen under the bus for me and something i might want to look into more often because those hypotheticals can really shape how you approach real baseball in addition to out of the park baseball yeah, it's also a really good way to learn how the game works because you start to notice trends and things that you see after playing it so many times. Um, you start to recognize like different um, different types of players that succeed well or continue to be reliable, and you start to notice you know types of pitchers that you know really are the ones that you want to be going after, and you start to you start to be able to get away from players and um, strategies that continue to fail over and over again, even though you think that they might work because of the way the game, you know, either operates or because of the way you set up your team, it's not quite the way you want it to be. So it's a good way to learn strategy, the game, and also kind of a little bit about yourself and kind of where you would take an organization. Yeah. Uh, so as for our final category of questions here, we've got backyard baseball related stuff. Now the backyard baseball project has definitely been very popular with a lot of our player base. Uh, we've seen high levels of participation in the previous two years. It's been a ton of fun. I'd consider a major success, probably maybe even arguably one of the best streams we've ever had on the Twitch channel. It's been so, so enjoyable. So we're going to start with how the backyard baseball project originated. How did it come to be? Yeah, so the the idea behind backyard baseball um, actually came from observing how the streams had been going for for a while. Because um, this was about, I think it was about a little over a year ago, we did our first season for backyard project, and um, the the reason why I ended up doing the backyard project and and um, replacing the Science Saturdays with that partially because I needed to kind of take some time off from Science Saturday to get more ideas and to, like, you know, try to get together, um, you know, a list of stuff we wanted to accomplish. But also because I had noticed that a lot of the streams um, were not very interactive in terms of how well the community can get involved in something that's being done on, uh, on, a, on a stream or on the channel. I know we have a lot of, you know, we have some really good streamers and it's been a lot of fun being able to, to, to do stuff with them. Um, but as a viewer, there's only so much you can really do while you watch somebody play OTP. Um, you know, you can do perfect team and it's really fun to be able to do that. That's our multiplayer approach towards OTP and everything. Um, but single player franchises are, are um, very hard to make. Um, I'm not going to say fun, 
and uh, extremely entertaining. They are very hard to pull off that entertaining approach to doing a single player franchise. You have to really pour into the team, get the community involved, and um, be able to get positive feedback from the community about what you're doing. And the Backyard Project was an attempt to get people into a league with their own players so they have some investment into what's happening on screen while also still having a theme that revolves around, you know, baseball and even some childhood memories for a lot of these, you know, a lot of these viewers because a lot of them are young kids. So for me, it was backyard baseball all the way because that was my childhood memories. That was my beginnings of, you know, baseball video games was backyard baseball. And, um, and there's questions. I definitely think there are some questions about some of the decisions we made for the first two seasons, but um, that was where we came from. That was the start of it, was to try to get a way for viewers to engage with the channel more and with the streamer more, so that way there was bigger investment for not only you know the viewers watching but also for you know additional people to talk about it after the stream was done so that way there was ways you could have conversations about it post stream at that point it definitely is a very interactive stream i think you do see a lot of people very engaged very active in the chat during the streams and i'm sure we're going to see that even more this year uh i'm definitely excited to see how we get the community involved, to what extent we're going to have people in the chat in this season, and uh, all the cool players that we see people submit. So speaking of, I know you said uh, there are some things about the previous two seasons that uh, you can bring takeaways from. What are those takeaways? What are the things that you are looking to bring back or improve upon to make season three even better? Yeah, so there's definitely been a lot of lessons learned from seasons one and two of the Beckard Project in terms of, you know, what not to do and what to do. Um, the player submissions have always been our biggest struggle is getting the people to, you know, getting people to be able to submit their players exactly the way they would like to shape their player, while also, you know, not letting them go too far into what I like to refer as min-maxing their player so that way they don't, you know, just take all of the best results and then everybody creates the same exact player because that's the best possible outcome. So balancing all of that is very difficult. Uh, it is not the easiest thing in the world. It's given me a lot of respect for, like, PBE and the um, the other, um, oh, what's the other person? LF, LFB Commish? The people who do their own versions and have been doing it for a long, longer time than I have been. Um, with community submitted players, you know, how they do their submission forms has um, greatly impacted how we attempted to do or how I attempted to do um, the Backyard Projects submissions as well. So that's definitely been the biggest lesson learned so far for Backyard Project. Um, for season two, we definitely went too far in terms of how much there was. That was Definitely one of the things that we instantly, I, I instantly figured out was that it was just, there was too many teams, there was too many players, it was too crowded, and it lost a lot of its charm because of the fact that there was just, it was such a massive uh, project at that point. It felt very hard to, you know, get people updates on their players and be able to make them feel connected last year, so... That was one of the definite things that we decided to do uh, moving forward was that we would make the we'd make the project smaller, so it's not going to be as expansive. Um, and there's going to be you know changes and adjustments to how we do it, but um, you know we want to make sure that people still feel like as if they can they can spot their player every single stream and they can get an update really fast. You know, and if and if that requires us to you know change how we put out results, maybe we will change that as well. But um, you know that's something that we're that I'm always looking out for in terms of uh, how to edit a uh, backyard project at this point. It definitely sounds like you are very focused on community engagement and trying to get people as connected with their players as possible, which I think is going to be a great template for success in season three. Speaking of season three, what do you think your timetable is at this point? Uh, the primary thing, obviously, is when we can expect player submissions, because I know you've already got out a lot of the players you're adding for the pro players and the uh, some of the backyard kids. 
Yeah. So unfortunately, I wish there was a time frame. Technically, the the time frame that we have for the project is um, as soon as we feel comfortable with you know where um, where stuff is basically uh, on the back end because uh, just just because of um, you know how busy things are right now and the the changes that are coming through. Um, there's just there's a lot of moving parts and it has to be done at a good time frame um, for me to be able to pull that off because I want to devote enough time to do it properly and um, and and it can't interfere with stuff so it has to be done carefully I wish I had an actual date or something um, I think I think we had said at one point we were hoping for late summer um, but as you can tell we are in late summer so it is not happening in late summer <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so unfortunately, all I can say is it'll happen as soon as we get the chance to be able to pull it off properly, because I'm not going to do it and, you know, do it poorly. That's that's the last thing that I want to do is, you know, try to get it started and then get so swamped with stuff happening that I just can't actually give it the the uh, devotion and time that it needs. So um, we're hoping I mean, I'm hoping that we'll be able to start doing player submissions sometime soon. Um, but that sometime soon could range from a couple of weeks to a couple months. It just depends on how how things are going. I think that's definitely a fair answer. Obviously, uh, you do have a job that takes priority, and I'm sure everybody is definitely more concerned with getting this right than anything else. So uh, I do appreciate that you are trying to do it as well as possible. So what are the forms going to look like for season three? If you do have an idea at this point, uh, <laughs> we just have some, general ideas. We have some general ideas. We're going to try to go back towards more of a season one type form in terms of submissions. Um, we're trying to see what we can do about um, allowing people to still keep the customization of their players while also allowing them to take in some kind of what we're calling archetype, um, which is very similar to how MLB The Show is doing their custom you know their uh, their player creation for when you do their stuff um that allows you to you know try to keep your player in a mindset of what it's trying to accomplish as a player but then it still gives you flexibility to then change the player however you'd like to to match kind of any customizations that you'd like to pull off with your player so balancing that is tough it's what we're working on right now and um you know in my spare time i get to accomplish a lot of balancing and, and additions to to the forums and everything. Um, and as soon as we get everything balanced, then it just comes down to actually making the forms and then sending it out for submissions. Yeah, that balancing stuff is very, very difficult. I actually, uh, over the summer, was messing around with some similar things. I wasn't going to do anything myself. But I wanted to see what your process was like. So I tried to get some balances in and tried to make it so that the players were even and I just could not get it done. So I honestly am very impressed with the fact that you were able to get it to work at all. Yeah, the hardest part is when you start to, you know, when you finally understand how OTP's game engine works and what it wants from players, you start to see stuff where it's like, oh, well that means they can take advantage of, you know, of this statistic for this rating and that blows all of these other ratings out of the water because they don't need these. You know, there's 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 different balancing acts you have to pull off. Otherwise, you know, you get what season one had, which was everybody's a knuckleballer and everybody is an 80 over 80 player because that's just what happens. Yep. Is there any advice you'd like to give to players to submit their players at this point? Or is that something that well, you think we're going to hold off on? I mean, there's not a whole lot I can really say other than make the player you want. Don't... um. Don't don't do the min maxing approach where you're trying to you know just make somebody who's highly rated make the player that is actually going to be you the, the person that you want to submit because that's way more fun than trying to make you know just the one person that's going to you know hit 50 home runs but bat you know 150. Um, while that's fun too and I can understand why some people would do that, um, it's a lot more fun when you actually make yourself or an ideal character that represents you because um, then you feel so much more 
you know, um, involved with that player and their successes are your successes and their failures are your failures versus, you know, you know, kind of making the trollish players where at that point you really don't care how they do because their accomplishment is just being created in the first place. So, you know, short, short success versus long-term success. Make the player you want and it'll feel a whole lot better in the long term. I definitely love that advice. I think that people making enjoyable players is going to be great. And hopefully we have some uh, memorable ones this year. We've had in the past a lot of players that are so much fun to watch. Like I know Yuka's Alex Verdugo was a fan favorite last season. Yep. And hopefully we'll have some guys like that coming into this year. What are you looking forward to the most about season three of Backyard Baseball? Um... Oh gosh. I mean, just the the community involvement is what I look forward to the most. What I look forward to is getting to know more of the community members, getting to hear um, you know, their excitement for their players or their teams. Um, I love being able to see fan bases made for fictional, you know, play, uh, fictional teams that have absolutely no real life meaning at this point. You know, you have these people you know, like the the nobles will always get their boos and you know the mystics are, my, mystics are always going to be that weird team that had Pablo Sanchez for a season. There's just so many cool memories that you're going to be able to um to to get with the with the backyard project and those are what I love the most. Being able to see the commitments from the channel and just the really cool and fun stuff that happens because of what the community brings to us. And that does seem to be the overall message of Backyard Baseball Season 3 is community. And I am very excited to see where you go with this because I have a feeling it's going to be very interactive, very entertaining, and a very high quality stream. So we will all be waiting with great anticipation. Ah, anticipa anticipation. Wow, I cannot say the word today. Uh, <laughs> with for bated to breath. <laughs> All right, I believe that concludes our segment today on the interview. So, unless you've got anything you want to bring up, I believe we can transition into our live franchise. Nope, I'm good. Let's do this. All right, so for the viewers in the chat, Alex does not know what team we are playing. I have informed him about the settings, but he is uh, going to be flying blind here tonight. So, let's introduce the Colorado Rockies. So I chose a team. Oh, this is going to be too easy now. Come on. Oh, too easy? You want me to move this over to the Marlins? I mean, I the Marlins are a fun team, to. but they won't win this this season. Uh, the idea you're is... just setting them up for success down the road at that point. Yeah, definitely the idea is to win this season. And I feel like the Rockies are kind of challenging on that standpoint. And the big reason is there isn't much prospect depth to trade from. There isn't yes. any, uh, prospects that you can call up. Now, you do have $50 million plus million to work with here and <laughs> some talent. But it is... I'm very intrigued to see how you decide to build this team because you are trying to get capital essentially from a minimal amount at this point yeah yeah the rockies are tough because while they do have the money available i think they're actually easier than the arizona diamondbacks at this point because they have so much money available they can um they can survive a couple years of a rebuild if you're trying to make them win today that's very difficult because there is no free agency we can use to pull that money to get some better players um like you've mentioned the prospect pool is very limited for the rockies um they're right now at a stage where basically they're looking for upstart prospects um to be able to you know it's rock the boat uh to make a statement about that uh you know you're looking for a lot of um good seasons from people like uh the first baseman they have right now i think it's montero um They've got some people that have actually done very, very well in in the um, in real life, but because we're using standard start of twenty two, this is also going to be really tough because people like Kyle Freeland and John Gray are um, uh, not as good as they have done for the regular season. The reason why the Rockies have done so well this year is because those two pitchers have actually performed up to what a lot of people expected them to be like. So unfortunately, what we're going to be looking at is um this is uh this is a 100 loss 
Rockies team that we're looking at versus what we get in real life, which is maybe maybe 86 lost Rockies team. So <laughs> this is going to be tough if you want us to win this season. But um, uh, let's let's see what we can pull off. Let's let's see what we can pull off here. So first thing we have to do is identify our our major weaknesses in the in the ball club. Um, and that's going to be mostly in regards to center field um, as well as technically catcher, because this is, again, this is non-live updated version of Elias Diaz. So while Diaz is good by, you know, live start standards, he is not good uh, by standard start standards. So we definitely need to get a better catcher. Um, we could definitely use, I mean, we could, you can put McMahon at third base and he'll do pretty gosh darn well. Um, yeah, that's probably going to be our best option is just to throw McMahon at third. Um, and that's again, going to be because of the fact that we have such limitations to kind of what our options are for moving people around and making trades. Um, it's going to be really difficult to, to make some of these bigger moves at this point. Cause just because of the fact that it's really tough to make trades with the Rockies. <laughs> oh, good grief. Also, let me, no, we do have the trade see. difficulty up two ticks, so it's going to be a little bit tougher than normal as well. Yeah, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to pull off some of these trades. We probably could, but um, it's not going to be the easiest. If we wanted to, let me think. I mean, we could sell the farm if we have to win this season. You'd have to end up pulling out like Rollison would have to be traded. Um, you'd have to be trading Welker and Velade. Um, and we'd have to see what we can get back in terms of uh, in terms of those people. Let me think. I would probably shop. Um, we'd want to start off by doing a couple of um, Shaba, Shaba players. <clears throat> just to see what we can get for certain players and what our returns could be. Okay. Because that's going to be our biggest um, our biggest identifier of what we can get back is going to equal what our options are. So, let me think. And would we offer up Velade or would we offer up, like, hold on. You'd think I'd be, like, all over this for the Rockies, but most of the time when I play as the Rockies, I'm always rebuilding. I don't... I don't try to win now. We can go for a rebuild style approach here, but it is going to be a one season stream. So there's yeah, no... let's let's go for it all. Let's 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 try to go all in and see if we can make it work. Let me see. So we would want to, um, yeah, we'd want to go ahead and shop a player to start off with. And we probably would want to do some kind of combination of Welker, Velade, and Rollison. Because we'd want to be able to get something that would uh, give us a good return right off the bat. Um, if we're okay with McMahon at, at third, um, we could even get by with uh, Hampson at second, probably. It just depends on what we can get back for, for Velade and Welker, in all honesty. Let's yeah. um let's try shopping either either just one of them or both of them. Um cuz that's going to be our biggest potential way of getting some players to our to our ball club. Um We also should probably uh let's see. Let's start with um yeah, let's do Velade and Welker okay. right off the bat. Let's just see what we can get for if we if we offer up both of these basically AAA prospects. What's the best we could potentially get? You know, what's yeah. our what what are our options at this point? This should be what a are good teams going to give us some relatively cheaper players to acquire? Yeah, and we might even be able to get some interesting players who actually would improve some spots. But um, you know, they might be they might be salary dumps at this point, where it's like, yeah, you're gonna pick up somebody, but he's gonna cost you a lot of money. I already see a couple players I'm liking here. Means isn't bad. If he had the live updated version of Means, that would be a pretty good deal. Well, yeah. Yeah, he's got the control, but the movement's pretty low. 
yeah yeah his uh his he gets hit hard when he has bad days so that's that's always rough all right we've also got i know corbin martin is a favorite of mine i don't know what your views on him are and tim lacastro is interesting at the least to me uh he doesn't generally get offered up in trades i think we can do better than both of them in all honesty i agree um i think there's a team out there that can probably give us a really good player for some kind of a salary dump yeah that absolutely could be the case i'm pretty sure i saw uh uh andrelton simmons's name come up he's one i definitely simmons like would quite a be lot. interesting um we do have stories still so i don't know if we really want to I don't think we'd want to push story to a new position right off the bat at this point. Yeah. Jesus Sanchez That's is true. a good option. If he wasn't injured, that would be a good option for us. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you've got Altuve on the list. If he wanted to shore up second base instead of having McMahon or, uh, well, not even McMahon, it would be uh Hampson there at this point. Trevor Bauer. Trevor Bauer. If we wanted to go with him personally, no, <laughs> yeah, I I'm just going to say personally no, we're maybe, going to uh steer clear of that. Maybe the Dodgers are trying to avoid catastrophe early on. Yeah, OTP new. OTP new. They're trying to get uh, out of the way before it let's... has any backlash. Yeah. I'm wondering if the Yankees, oh, they don't offer any of their like um expensive players. It's a shame that Zach Wheeler isn't um Live, start live version Jack Wheeler because he is having a crazy good Cy Young caliber season. Yep. In fact, let's go ahead and see what they'd offer for Zach Wheeler. If you uh, go to his profile page again and you just say uh, offer, or uh, if we uh, bring up what they'd want for him, right? Okay. We can see what would make it work. They don't actually want too much to make this one happen. So we could hypothetically acquire Zach Wheeler. And we do have a lot of money to work with, so his salary isn't too much yep. of a concern. That would not be that bad at all. Um, I'd give them Amador. That's a great option for us. He's only 17 years of age. If we're winning this year, we need that kind of a starting pitcher. So Amador is an easy, easy give for a shortstop prospect down the road that, you know, if we sign Story to a long-term deal after winning, he sticks around and he doesn't go anywhere. So I would... Um, yeah, I'd probably make that deal right there. That's a good deal for us. All right. So we've acquired Zach Wheeler. He's going to definitely be a big boost at the top of the rotation. Yeah, that gives us a pretty good solid, probably number two starter for us behind uh, Marquez uh, at this point. Can we head over to the Yankees for a second? I want to see if they'd be willing to give us Giancarlo Stanton for cheap. Oh, I'm sure they absolutely will be willing to give us Giancarlo Stanton. He does have that big contract. Yes, so, yeah. he does. The question is just going to be how much do they want for him? It looks like these are actually some pretty good players. Oof. I think you're looking at some guys who are either Drew Romo, one of our top prospects, or somebody who's going to be a part of the team this year. Yeah, I think Sheffield can leave for, for Stanton at this point. That wouldn't be too, too bad. Yep. Jordan Sheffield is an interesting reliever, but he is a reliever, and Stanton is going to be a massive power bat, which, keep in mind, does play up in Yankee State or not Yankee Stadium, uh, Coors Field. Well, it does there, too, technically. <laughs> yeah, it does. All right, are we making it's, this trade uh, to Stanton? Yeah, I'd make that deal. If we're trying to win in one year, Sheffield can go for Stanton. That's that's easy enough to be able to pull off right there. Um, that's going to put us pretty much out of money, unfortunately. Um, yeah. We could look at somehow wheeling and dealing Charlie Blackman if we wanted to, but um, I mean, we could have gone further to push for retainment on Wheeler and Stanton, but then you're just nickeling and diming them. And, you know, I don't want to make this take an hour if I can help it. Right. Because um, <laughs> we'd be here for a while if we tried to do stuff like that. Um, so that gives us some pretty good starting points for the team with two good players that. I mean, I don't think that's going to make us playoff bound technically, but that at least gives us some good, solid backups. Not even backups. Those are starters right there. Not all yeah. stars, but they're going to be at least uh, playable. And they're not going to, as long as they don't get injured, we're going to be just fine with them. That knocks, uh, who did that knock out of the starting rotation? I'm following uh, right along now, on my end as well. Our number five starter is Julio 
Shashin. Oh, I did uh, share it with you yeah, in the Discord, Chassin. so you should be able to see it live there. Yeah, so Chassin will probably still be our uh, our number five starter at this point. Um, that's not bad, though, because we're still waiting for Kyle Freeland to come back from, from his injury list really quickly here. Yeah. So um, that's not a bad rotation if you have... Um, have we added Wheeler to the... Uh, to the team yet or is that is that with wheeler at the uh, ace position no that's with wheeler not on the team at all so this is our oh, rotation okay Sans so it'll wheeler. be even better once we add uh wheeler we'll probably knock uh who sends out of the rotation yeah, i'm guessing or shashin at the bottom oh man or i'd prefer Gomer. to see uh shashin go to the bullpen than sends yeah Sensatella's uh ground ball ability and his really good movement and control is really nice if he just you know can not get himself beat by hitters. He's still a very good quality starting pitcher. Yeah, I think if we can build a strong defense behind him, he should be a very effective option. So I'll move Chashin to the bullpen and uh, put Wheeler in the rotation. What slot do you want him on? Number two, I um, assume, behind uh, Marquez. I'd almost let the AI figure out what it wants to do first because if it thinks that Wheeler is number one, I'd, I'd be fine with Wheeler going number one. I think uh, Marquez probably should be number one on our listings the ai does like wheeler as the number one pitcher here okay i actually wouldn't mind that because you kind of want to give marquez you know not that we're trying to take away marquez's ace position but you do want to give marquez like a little bit of a breathing room that he's not supposed to be like the best pitcher we have and he has to perform um less stress on marquez is good um, and wheeler does he's... have that burden with the phillies already so he's used yeah. to it yeah, so Wheeler could do that. Plus, I think he's an innings eater pitcher, isn't he? Yeah, he absolutely pitches like 200 innings every year. He's got solid 60 stamina. Yeah. I imagine with his control, he'll be efficient. Yeah, him and Marquez should be able to go 200 innings each. Like, they should both do 200 innings with like 14 wins if we have a good season. That should be an easy win for us right there. Um, we can go ahead and actually drop Chi Chi um, right. or Alex Gonzalez. <laughs> His actual name is Alex. I didn't know that until recently. But um, yeah, Gonzalez, we can drop back down to AAA because he's not going to be starting since we have, um, you know, Chassin on the long reliever duty at this point. All right. Let me think. What else do we want to accomplish before we move forward with other trade options or signings. So we do need to figure out what our outfield looks like as well. I'm assuming Stanton goes left or right. Probably yeah. right. He does have a stronger arm. Uh, so Actually, Blackman got some pretty good improvements with 22. I forgot about that. Ah, Blackman can stay in right, actually. Okay. Yeah, Blackman will stay in right. That's just fine. Um, I wonder if we could move... Let's see, we've got... So we want to have McMahon play third. That's pretty much a given. He's a good third base, and he'll be solid there. Good power bat. Shortstops is stories to lose at this point. Um, I wish the game loved him a little bit more, but at the same time, he hasn't had the best of seasons. I wish the game had gotten CJ Crone updated for a live version. He has been phenomenal. Yeah, in the past, like, awesome month movie. and a half at this point. Um, oh, wow, I forgot. We had Josh Fuentes, like, really rated high as well. I forgot about that. Yeah, he's not terrible. Hmm. We probably need to be looking for a catcher then at this yeah. point. Um, Because that's probably one of our last things that we actually need to worry about. Um, we could go on to the free agency. I think um, both Lucroy and Flowers are available via free agency if we wanted to go that route. That could be. That would be an option. Yep, here's Lucroy and Flowers as well. Yeah, these both look like respectable catchers. Yeah. Shouldn't be too expensive to sign either. Wonder if there's an option to trade for a catcher as well. We could look to do a double duo where we basically drop Nunez, uh, Dom, and we drop um, uh, Diaz, and we get a whole new double combo behind the plate because that could be better for us down the road. Yeah. Um. 
let's try to sign flowers. Um, right. Do we actually have enough money for flowers? He <laughs> no, wants 3.4, but I imagine he'll go a little bit lower. We could offer him like two and a half and see if that would be something he would take. He might get signed by somebody else. Do you want to give him a minor league contract or are we just putting him on the major league roster? Because if well, he's going if for a major gets... league, it'll probably be a little less. Yeah, I would offer him like a major league contract. We could try to offer him like two million and see if he'd take two. All right. Yeah, he'll take the two million. Okay, because yeah, if we sign him, he's going to be starting for us. Yeah, he's, that pretty much is going to be a given. Yeah, he's. Um, we could look and see if the Indians want to get rid of um, of hedges. All right. I I doubt it. They sometimes have a problem because they have hedges and Perez, so you can get one or the other pretty cheaply. But it just depends if they are in rebuild mode or not, because they almost always have to be in rebuild. Yeah, they're not. Uh, they do want a lot for hedges. They kind of want a oh, lot. Plus, actually, we also have no money. So. I'd imagine it's the money that's the problem. We just can't afford hedges. Yeah, and Perez is five million if you want to go for him. So, yeah, that's probably expensive. why it's so much tougher. So we'd yeah, probably have to look didn't. at dumping cash if we want to bring on any of the players with any kind of salary. Yeah, we'd have to look at... Um, it would probably have to be Blackman at that point if we wanted to get rid of somebody who had a lot of salary on our system right now. I'm actually surprised they st we still had Ian Desmond on the, uh, on the salary base since he had forfeited the entire year. Yeah, I... It would definitely make the Rockies' financial situation even more flexible. Uh, to not have him there. Yeah, just ever so slightly. You know, an extra $8 million would have been nice, but we'll leave it on for now. I don't mind. Um, I don't actually even know if they're technically paying him or not. I don't think they are. I think he I think he forfeited the season. Yeah, my understanding uh, is he did. Let me think. Because we really don't have anybody in, like, AAA that's going to be a better option for us. Uh, I mean, we, nah, that's not going to be an option for us. I wish Mc, Mc, MacIver was, was, uh, was more ready. Him or Romo would have been fantastic, but, uh, yeah. we really don't have either of them. So we could move forward with the understanding that Flowers becomes the starting catcher eventually. And then you just have Diaz as your backup at that point. Um, you're hoping that, you know, Flowers signs a couple days after the beginning of the regular season. Rogers is probably going to be your starting second baseman once he comes back from his uh, strained hamstring, which is in four weeks. Right. And then Freeland is also four weeks. So you could go ahead and say the first month is just kind of, you know, uh, hope and pray you go 500 approach before the new players come in. Because that would be, you know, that's going to be, uh, if we get Flowers, we can drop Hampson, Nunez, and Chassin for Freeland, Rogers, and Flowers to come on, and that'll give us some good some good quality players in replacement for people that are not going to be very good. Yeah, that's probably going to be our best option. So we should have... Do we have an extra spot in our active roster right now? We do, but we also haven't put Stanton on it yet. Yeah, we got to put Stanton onto the team at this point. I assume he's playing in left field over Hilliard. Yep, I'd put him out in left. Um, that makes uh, Tapia and Hilliard um, become our backups. We probably don't need both of them, but at the moment, I don't feel like as if we want to get rid of either of them. Um, I like Hilliard's power and his ability to play the outfield. That's good. Tapia's ability to get on base is good. His speed is decent. Um, Tapia's probably the first one to go if we have to get rid of one of them. Um, but I like Connor Joe. I think he fills a lot of positions if you can teach him the other positions. Fuentes is your backup first and third baseman at this point. Technically, we don't have a backup shortstop because that's technically Owings. Um, right. Which, Owings is actually not a bad shortstop. He's actually a pretty decent fielder in real life. Um, so I wouldn't have a problem with having Owings you know, um, backing up that, that position. 
I wish we had a better center fielder, in all honesty, for for range. You know, we could actually throw Hampson out to center field. Yeah, he's got a he's little not, bit of range. He's not much better. In fact, he has a worse arm than Owings. I think his range so is actually five points worse, too. Hmm. That's a tough call because I mean, you could put, we could put, um, we could even put Hilliard in center field. That would probably also work. Yeah, we could absolutely put Hilliard in center field. He's got a little bit on the outfield. Defense. Yeah, he's also got some good speed, which would give us something that we don't have in the lineup besides Hamps, uh, Hampson right now. Yeah, he's just five points of range worse than Owings. He probably hits a little bit better. And he does have the speed. Yeah, let's put um, let's put Hilliard in center instead, and then we'll have Owings go and play second over Hampson because okay. he's got a better bat than Hampson has. Yeah. And then uh, Fuentes is your backup third baseman, first baseman. Connor Joe becomes. I honestly don't know how we utilize Connor Joe at this point. It looks like he's primarily just being used as a secondary backup at third base, possibly at first base before Fuentes as well. And a pinch hitter. Makes sense. Yeah, that should work. I don't mind having Diaz be the catcher for a couple of days if we are getting flowers down the road. Okay. And then, yeah, Crone is your, your slugger alongside Stanton, Hilliard. Um, Blackman is your on-base getter. Story's got some power. McMahon's got some power. You got a lot of power across most of this, uh, across most of this team at this point, which is actually kind of nice. Yeah, we should see plenty of home runs. I'm pretty sure almost everybody has at least 55 power. You yeah, know, and then Diaz, really if he good. was the updated live version, he would have the power too, I betcha. Yeah, we've got Crone, Story, Stanton all have pretty strong power as well. Should see some very high home run totals from Stanton in particular as the big trade acquisition. I'd certainly hope we can get him to really perform and hopefully stay healthy as well. Yeah. Yeah, you're putting a lot on Stanton to be the carrying party of this offense. Um, which is always a dangerous dangerous risk. But when you're the Rockies and you can put when you can have Giancarlo Stanton in a Rockies uniform at Coors Field, that in and of itself is worth the worth the price of admission right about there. Like I'd go to most of those games at that point, um, just to watch him hit. Yeah, those guys with power, you love to see them play in cores. Home run derby uh, course was amazing. It was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. I'm so happy that I was able to be there for that. That was so much fun to be there. Okay. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot more we can really do at this point. Um, the team is going to rely heavily on its offense and being clutch and getting a lot of home runs. Um, there's only so much you can really do with the Rockies pitching staff. You're just hoping for performance from breakout breakout years from the starting rotation and a couple of solid relievers who can at least get you some saves. That's that's really what you're hoping for. You're hoping that given Stevenson, Estevez, and Bard can manage to do most of the load um, and make this work. Yeah, well, we'll certainly uh, hope for a strong season. Uh, anything you want to do with the lineup or bullpen before we move on? Um, oh, let me see. I'd probably have a story not lead off if we could help it. Okay, who do you want to stick I'd in that? I'd probably first? have Owings leading off, Charlie Blackman batting second, and then I'd probably put story third stanton fourth and then crone fifth and then mcmahon would be sixth hilliard 
probably seventh. And then I put Diaz eighth. I, I wouldn't do the pitcher in the eighth spot. Not for the Rockies here. I don't know why they had Hillier or not Hilliard Diaz hitting ninth. He's not particularly fast for that speedy number nine yeah. philosophy either. And then I would just copy and paste this lineup and depth chart to the uh, to the left-handed pitcher spot as well. All right, and I assume same thing for the American League parts with the DH. Uh, for the DHs, that'll allow us to have either probably Fuentes. I'm guessing no, they're gonna have Tapia DH. Really? So our options are definitely Tapia, Fuentes, and maybe even Connor Joe. Um, I would prefer to go with. Oh gosh, I mean Connor Joe's pretty good. Is there a split version that's better for one or the other, though? Well, let's take a look. So hmm. you've got Connor Joe and Joshua Fuentes are righties. Rymel Tapia is a lefty. Tapia yeah. hits much better versus righties, so he might make more sense. As a We'd go with Tapia right. then. We'd probably put Tapia batting ninth as the DH at that stage. Okay. And... Do you want to do a different DH versus left-handed pitchers? Because yep, he is we'd go different speedy. versus lefties. Um, I'd probably end up having... Fuentes hits lefties pretty well. Yeah, I, I think I'd go with Fuentes uh, and then allow um, allow Joe to be like your utility player at that point because he kind of, kind of can play almost all the positions that you need. Yeah. Where do you want to put him that he is maybe not right now? Or do you just want to flip Joe and Fuentes? Nope. Um, no, I think that's fine the way it is. You All know, right. if, if if Fuentes... Need, I prefer to have Fuentes be the first call for a replacement uh, versus Joe. Uh, Fuentes has got some better fielding than Joe has, so he's better if he has to play the field. Um, prefer, would prefer to always have Fuentes be the first call for a uh, for a pinch hitting spot as well if we can help it, but uh, not when he's starting, unfortunately. That makes it Tapia's job. So, yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we're just basically waiting for a couple of injuries to come back, and uh, to see if we get flowers. That's that's basically going to be about it, um, unless we wanted to, to 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 change some of our budgets at all. But we really don't really want to mess with that too much because we're just doing one season anyways. Yeah. I mean, you could probably save quite a bit of cash if you want to cut back on some of these budgets, maybe make a few more acquisitions. Uh, that kind of defeats the purpose of it being a one-year sim, though. Like, We don't want to destroy the team just to win it all one year. Because yeah. we could. We could totally go through and just be like, yeah, there's no player development, no drafting, no international you know, free agents. All this gets cut. Uh, it all goes into the budget for players, and then we just go out and <laughs> get a couple more elite players at that point. But... um. I like the way the team looks. Um, that's probably about as best as you can do for a, a quick, a quick uh, attempt at making the team go into almost a win now mode. This should at least beat the uh, D backs and Giants if everyone stays healthy. Yeah, I definitely think the marquee acquisitions of Wheeler and Stanton should make an impact on this team's performance. Neither of these guys were particularly expensive. We didn't give up any of our key players, so hopefully they can be the difference maker to get this team into playoff contention. All right, do you want to start simulating? Let's start simulating. Let's see how this goes. Obviously, this is a very difficult decision. I've got to be astounded if we manage to top the Padres and Dodgers with the talent that those two teams have Oh, got. yeah. Oh, yeah. Where we would consider, you know, um, what we consider to be depth, they consider to be double-A, triple-A, you know, prospects. Yeah. Um, we're just that far behind on developing the amount of depth needed for a playoff contending team. Um, I'm harped about that before, where that's one of the things that I almost always go with at the beginning of streams, is that we have to get depth. You have to be able to get, you know the third and fourth back up to a player's position, just so that way you don't run the risk of, you know, having problems. I definitely agree with that. If we have some injuries to our team, it's going to be very difficult to fill those holes. We don't really have too much depth at all at some positions. Hmm. 
The Cubbies were interested in Fuentes. Could they we were. shop Fuentes around for a quick second and see what we get for him? Yeah. They did offer Jake Marisnik, who is a player I don't think they value too highly. He's somebody I get sometimes as a utility outfielder. Uh, pretty good rangy guy. He is actually like a 70 range center fielder. So I was about to say, he's actually a decent center fielder who would give us an upgrade in center. So that's almost worth it for us if we're trying to win now. Because you just, Fuentes is kind of on the outside looking in of our, you know, batting yeah, sure. order at yeah, this point. Are, yeah. So it looks like none of these offers are too strong. Not really, unfortunately. Would you like to negotiate the trade with the Cubs? To Can I take to a look at Maris, uh, Maris Neck real fast? Yeah, absolutely. Because it just depends on how good his bat is. Because he has to at least be able to hold, you know, he needs to at least be able to tread water with, 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 with his bat. He's got uh, some for power. For us to want to put him. But he's not going to draw walks. He'll strike out a ton. And it doesn't look like his batting average is going to be terribly strong. He is fast. Yeah. He's got some decent speed, um, and you like the range in center field. That's always nice. But I think we'll be okay with what we've got so far. Um, we're only off by 10 range, so it's not too, too bad. It's probably manageable. Um, and if we have to, we can always look to the trade deadline to get hopefully something better for Fuentes at that point. Yeah. Um, if we were really desperate, we'd be offering up Rollison to, to, to teams. That would be our... Our, our final straw approach. If we start to compete, uh, we'll offer up Rollison instead. So we should be go ahead and we should be good to continue simming and seeing if we get uh, flowers. All right. I definitely think the trade deadline could be a great alter, uh, an, a great option for us to look at adding some players on the cheaper side, maybe some options we wouldn't be able to acquire at other yep. times to give us that second half. Piece. Absolutely. All right. So, so we, we got flowers. flowers. Awesome. So we can uh, we can go ahead and drop Dom Nunez and put Flowers on the uh, Major League roster at this point. All right. And that means Flowers is going to be starting because he should be. Right. Any adjustments you want to make to the batting order with him in here now? Or um, are we just leaving it as is? I mean, he's not a bad hitter in all honesty, but I don't really feel like as if he's you know going to have that big of a role on our lineup, so having him bat eight is probably just fine. Because he'll strike out a ton. So I'd rather see him not be impactful, you know, higher up in the lineup and striking out a lot of the time. If we can help it. Oh man, look at this crazy opening day against the Dodgers. Fourteen to seven loss. At least the offense showed up. Oh poor Wheeler was just like this is Colorado? Well, it looks like he actually had a decent game. Oh, no, he did not have a de he Wow. Only two earned runs. I wonder how many unearned runs he had. Oh, man, that's not a good sign. He didn't have... His rates were fine. He didn't allow any home runs. He allowed only one walk. He struck two out, so... He just got some really bad uh, support, it looks like. Yeah, the Babbitt of 583 in this first Oof. start is going to really do you in in only 2.1 innings. Well, and that's the Dodgers for you, too. Their their entire lineup is is advantageous. They will they will keep pushing uh, even when <laughs> even when they've already won the game. They will keep going. Yeah, the Dodgers are a very thorough, dangerous hitting team. Even if you get through the lineup, if you have guys injured, their backups are really good hitters. Yeah. All right, well, we can probably go ahead and keep going. We got Flowers, so we're good to... Ooh, this is not a good start. <laughs> it never is. You have to play three games against the Dodgers immediately. I think yeah. you have the D-backs, and then I think you have San Diego. Um, either that or San Fran. So yeah, it's a it's a rough start for the Rockies every single time you try to do something with them. Well, our offense looks like it's been pretty strong, uh, but the defense has allowed a lot of runs so far. Oof, those ERAs are not looking pretty right now. Yeah, those. Ouch. Yeah, that's uh, that's a rough start. Man, this is. Our best ERA starter once through the rotation is Senzatella at 6.43. That sounds about right, <laughs> in all honesty. 
Zach Wheeler is not having a good time either. His second start was even worse than the first start. Ooh, he allowed three oh, home no. runs to the Diamondbacks. <laughs> That's not what you want to see. <sighs> Gotta be expecting better things from him. Stance hitting, though. That's a good start. I mean... You kind of have to just hope and pray that you get the the, the early Coors effect out of the way, um, and then you just get better over the course of the regular season. That's that's your goal. Yeah, we're hoping that Zach Wheeler affects to or adjusts to the effects of Coors Field. Oh man, this is not a good start at all. One and nine. <laughs> Stanton's still hitting, but it looks like uh, just about everybody else has decided not to. No one else is showing up but him. How many homers yeah. is he projected to have by the end of the season? Oh, he's 113. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so he's going to be the selling point of the entire season. Is going to be how many home runs can Stanton hit, guys? Yeah, how many? Stanton and Coors with that 80 grade home run power is just ridiculous what he's doing. Yes. And the rest of the team is not looking pretty at all. Man, this is... No. Uh, <laughs> a lot of other stuff is just not going to work we've got to hope for better oh hey look we won a second game oh we have a two game winning streak Zach is hurt for five days but he should hopefully be back in time for his next start yeah that'd be back in time for his next start so we're fine with that he has really struggled so far he was doing okay in his last game against the Mets but yeah, uh, we got hurt. We're also hoping that that injury doesn't pre prelude to other problems down the road. That could be bad. That could be bad. Well, we are already twelve and a half games out of first <laughs> place. <laughs> Uh, this that reminds, does not surprise me. This reminds me a lot of the Diamondbacks season, but without injuries yeah. being the problem. Uh, Where you just is... don't think they can get any lower, and then they continue to surprise you, and it's like, why? Well, at least we're hopefully not going to set the all-time road losing streak. Uh, but then That's again, true. considering the Rockies' home away splits this year, if we do anything like that, it could be very possible to hit that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to see if uh, if the team can pull that off or not. Oh, Kyle Freeland's healthy, as is Brendan Rogers, so that Yay. should be a nice little boost. Now, right. because we're trying to win it all this season, I'm not even going to rehab them. We're just going to throw them right back into the team. So um, that means we're sending... Who are we going to send down again now? That's our second base option. So I do we send down do we send down Connor Joe at this point, or are we thinking are we thinking Chris Owings? How has Chris Owings done so far at second base? Uh offensively he's been a slightly below league average hitter with the adjusted for Coors Field metrics. His war is I mean he's on pace for a two war year, so that's not bad. His fielding has not been great, but I believe he's still training up a little bit at the position. Okay. A couple of errors, some bad zone rating systems. Mm. Yeah. I would probably send Chris Owings down then. All right, give him the chance to train up at second base. Yep. Maybe see if he can be an option for us then. If he'll go down, that is. He will go down. Okay, good. That'll let us put uh, Rogers back on the system, and then I would probably, uh, depending upon how Chassin has done as a relief pitcher, he probably goes down to AAA as well. Yeah, 605 ERA. Not pretty. We've used him a lot, but um, yeah, that's that's just oh, that's man. just not going to work for a playoff a playoff approaching team. We have used him way too much. He's on pace for 130 innings as a reliever. As a relief um, pitcher, he has to be DFA'd. I. I'm sure nobody's going to claim well, it. I, well, DFA him, yeah. Nobody's going to pick him up. And that'll let us put Freeland back on the on the, uh, on the the active roster. To send to the bullpen from the rotation. Gomber, Senzatella. Gosh, I mean, I would say Senzatella would be the option, but he's been the best starting so, pitcher so far. <laughs> yeah, to 
Lovely 592 ERA. He's been our best starter <laughs> through the season. Well, he's also gone the farthest in ball games. You know, he yeah. has the 24 innings pitched and only four starts. Everyone else is below him for five starts. So it's no wonder that the bullpen's <sighs> been so taxed because the rotation can't go more than four innings a game. Yeah, that's sad. Um, yeah, I would throw some Tatella onto the uh, the bullpen at this point, even though he's been our best starter. Um, he can give us depth as a reliever. Yeah, you almost think that 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 his ability to be a good relief pitcher might actually be better than him being our best starter. Because he's going to be needed just about every game these days. Oh, well, yeah, every other game, we're probably going to be asking a couple innings out of him, it seems like. Good grief. Man, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's at the highest war of all of our pitchers, 0.5 on pace for a 3.3 war season. That's pretty funny. That's actually not that bad for what Santella is expected to do and what he's done in real life. That would actually have been a good year. Yeah, that's absolutely a solid season, just not the 592 ERA part. <laughs> Well, you got to think of everything in, in a Coors Field approach here, because everything is, you know, maybe one or two points higher than it, what it actually is. All right. So that, yeah, that's it, once you start bad. getting down, you know, once they get a little bit lower, it's like, OK, that's just Jermon Marquez having a couple of bad starts, you know, rough start of the season. Maybe he'll bounce back. You know, Wheeler, yeah. same thing. Gray's got to figure it out. That's got to come down. Um, there you go. A couple wins against Arizona. We'll take that. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we are starting to get back close to a 300 winning percentage. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a we good will get there. Mystery. A six to one win. So oh, notably, no. our pitching was good in that game. And Kyle Freeland, I believe that was his first start off the injured list, goes 5.2 innings, which is long for our guys, gives up only one home run, and good. shuts down the Diamondbacks. Nice. And Wheeler started the day before and also had a good day, too. So... Yeah, Wheeler's ERA is starting to drop. All right. Ooh, eight innings and no earned runs. No runs. There we go. That's, yeah. that's the pitcher we were expecting to acquire from the Phillies. Yeah, that's much better. Hopefully having Rodgers at second base helps our defense as well because he does have a much better rating than Owings yes. did. Yeah, he does bring us some better, not only hitting, but also some better defense to our up-the-middle position, so... That should be good. So, Shashin will not be demoted. We're going to have to either release him or put him back on the active roster. Um, We can release him then. Because if we're going to go with Shashin, that means we'd be sacrificing Senzatella's time. His, his, his playing time would go down. Yeah. I and um, I prefer the extreme ground ball Senzatella versus Shashin. The extreme ground balls is definitely making a very big difference, I'm sure, in his performance, seeing how yeah. much better he's been than just about everyone. I mean, it's hard been. when you have the, the low stuff that he has. It's still going to be a challenge, um, but it helps him limit stuff a lot better. Well, we're not the worst team. <laughs> no. Amazingly, the Pittsburgh Pirates aren't just worse than us. They're 50 points worse than us in winning percentage. Oh That's been an amazing year for Brian Reynolds, Anthony Alford, and uh, Chad Cool, I believe, is a reliever. Are they using him? They're using him as a starter. But he does He's have their a ace right now. RA. Yeah. <laughs> He they ace. must have already gotten hit by the injury bug at this point. Oh, yeah, this is lovely. They've got three pitchers in their rotation with no wins so far. Oh, my god! Oh, yeah, their pitching woes are about on par with us, I think. And their offense is worse. And they don't play at Coors. No, they do so not. So they have no excuse. <laughs> oh, man, Brendan Rodgers has been unbelievable since coming off the injured list. He's got a 302 batting average, seven home runs already. Nice. In only 21 games, and yeah, he's having a great start. His fielding has also been much better than Owings. He has yet to commit an error. The range and zone rating are both solid. The efficiency is Good. solid. So, yeah, so we're just waiting boost. for a couple of our other hitters to finally get it uh, working as well, and then our offense should be uh, on par. Yeah, CJ Crone, Trevor Story, hopefully Ryan McMahon. He's been really disappointing up to this point. Yeah, McMahon's got to get it turned around. That's the the issues of having to rely on players that, you know, either have never been able to really give you solid consistency or you're still hoping will, you know, bounce back or have a resurgency year. 
that that is not the way you want to um, be having hope for your ball club. Yeah. The good news is there's a lot of green in the player development update. So other than yep. Kyle Freeland and uh, ironically, Brennan Rogers, who has been on fire, a lot of players are improving. Nice to see, you know, like the lot a Welker, a couple yeah. of the prospects yeah. that we could look at trading at the trade deadline, um, getting some improvements. Now, I mean, like, I don't think we would actually do that if we're this bad of a season. <laughs> I don't know if very many teams that'd be looking at a 333 winning percentage and be like, yeah, the trade deadline, we're definitely going to be buyers. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, we're going to be buying. I, We have started coming up, though. We've eclipsed the 300 winning percentage. You can see we're steadily increasing on the graph. Things are yeah. looking a little better. Uh, we do have Stanton and Crone are two of the highest home run totals in the league. So that is good news. Yeah, we're going to be relying heavily on just a barrage of home runs out of our, you know, three, four, and five hitters at this point. We only have two pitchers with an ERA under 5.67, which <laughs> that's going to be pretty oh, much the root no. of our problems here. We are second at home runs, so what we're trying to do, we are succeeding at. But we are uh, worst in just about every pitching and defensive metric in the league. It's not pretty right now. Yeah, I, I, it could be better. It could be a lot better. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Better. It could be a lot better. Technically, it could be worse. Um, you know, we could be having injuries on top of bad performances. Um, we haven't gotten any injuries at all. And of course, as I say that, we're probably going to get a couple. But that's been a good sign that at least we're not, you know, giving the season up, you know, with like Stanton going down and, you know, Wheeler going down or something like that, you know, or gray going down for the season. Um, you gotta just give them time. I think part of our problem is also the fact that the rest of the division has been insane. The diamondbacks are the, yeah. the fourth team at a well over 500 or a one game over 500 record. And then the giants are a, second wild card team the padres have a 637 winning percentage and are two and a half games yeah. behind the dodgers it's just it's it's not impossible to win in a division where everybody you know or at least you know two or three of the five teams are uber competitive you know ready to win it all this year and then you're just you're just not even close to where they are in terms of your death and your development so it does not surprise me that we're doing so poorly. Um, if the Giants lose an extra six games and the D-backs lose an extra six games and we tack on maybe four of those, we're looking a lot nicer. You know, we, we actually would be respectable for what we've got. But um, it's it's tough when, you know, like you expect the Dodgers and Padres to be over a 600 winning percentage. You don't expect the Dodgers to be at 722. <laughs> and you definitely don't expect the Giants and D-backs to be over 500. Um, not by the standard start of a TB22, at least. This is with Trevor Bauer getting uh, justice delivered to him at a 763 ERA. Really, this rotation has struggled. <laughs> it's badly. Price. Of course, Price is having a good season. Why yeah. does David Price have a good season all the time? I don't know. He's. I love <sighs> acquiring Price lately because he always seems to work out. And the Padres, it looks like their hitting hasn't really been there. So they're just really getting excellent pitching, it seems. Or that they've been injured. Is that the problem? Let me see. Who do they have right now? No, they've got their full lineup. Wow. Yeah, they've got some relievers out. And Will Myers. Wow. But he's super important. Oh, Pierce Johnson got DFA'd. Is he expensive? That's interesting. Yeah. I wonder if... Uh, what about that interesting... Uh, I see he's extreme fly ball, unfortunately. He's oh, a little expensive, yeah, too. Right so. That probably not our best interest to pick up somebody who's really not going to be successful at Coors Field. I agree. Yeah, he, and for two billion at that, uh, we are kind of trying to pinch pennies and save our money for when we really need it at the deadline. If we happen to be in a position where we can compete, that is. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully we can string some wins together, get close to maybe 400 is our next goal for winning percentage. Yeah. Yeah, if we get closer to 400, I would be I'd be happy with that. 
I don't think we're getting closer to 400, though. I think we're about <laughs> the same place we were before, unfortunately. Yep. A lot of close losses, too. It means the bullpen's not quite being able to hold on. Yeah, and the offense hasn't come together. Only three runs in these two games, which is not what we are shooting for right now. No. Nope. For the Rockies, you got to be hoping for, like, six. Six is going to be the minimum you need to guarantee a win for a Rockies organization. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to meet that mark. But Brendan Rodgers is having a really good year so far. Uh, definitely the brightest spot on the team. Although it looks like Herman Marquez, while he is posting a 6.58 ERA, is doing decently well in terms of his war. Yeah, he's still being able to eat innings, keep the home runs down. Looks like the walks are a little bit of a problem, and he's not getting people striking out, which is That's a weird. bigger problem. I don't know why he's struggling so much with the strikeouts. Yeah, I'm not sure why that if he's just getting lucky or if it's something else. That's that's interesting. Yeah, that is really strange. I think our team has had a lot of problems with that. I don't know why our strikeout totals are so low, especially given the sheer amount of batters our team is facing. You'd think they'd be able to strike a few more guys out. <laughs> I think our stuff oh. is at least decent for most of these guys, too. We've got some guys like Bard. He is actually striking guys out, though, so... I don't yeah, really Bard's going to be all or nothing when it comes to strikeouts and walks, unfortunately. He certainly has shown that this year with a walk rate up in the rafters at 6.8. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. ERA. He only has one loss, amazingly. He's actually getting the saves when he has the opportunity. He's just walking everybody to get there and allowing... Uh, so high ERA. I don't know how he's doing it. Huh. It seems like as if we're just bringing him in spots he's not supposed to be brought into. That's probably because we don't have the lead in games often enough for him to get the work. <laughs> and our bullpen's probably always tired, too. Yeah, I'd imagine everybody's getting used all the time. Oh, yeah, that looks about right. Everybody's exhausted. We might have to look at calling somebody up from AAA to give us an extra pitcher. Potentially. Rollison is probably the closest to ready at this point. We've also got in AA is Tommy Doyle. Doyle would be the person to call up if he was actually like ready ready. Um, Jairo I mean, Diaz is an option. You could probably do Diaz, Doyle, and Rollison if you wanted to switch out a couple people. Just make a big change at this point. I mean, can't be Just worse than what we're doing now. I'm sorry? Can't be worse than what we're doing now. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Let's see who we have on our staff right now. So I would drop... So I would have Almonte go back down to AAA. Um, let's send down a batter as well. All right. Because we probably have too many bench hitters Ooh, Connor at Joe's this actually point been a really good bat off the bench surprisingly and that's to be expected he's actually a pretty good hitter so that's yeah. why i'd like to keep him as long as possible um who else do we have i could probably see us sending tapia down yeah tapia's by far been the worst of our uh bench hitters so far everybody on our bench actually seems to be doing quite well so we need to dfa him if we want to send him down we could shop uh, him around he does have 1.9 yeah yeah let's shop him around and see what we can get for uh for tapia and if we do end up dfaing him and he gets picked up that's two million dollars freed up for later yeah that wouldn't be the end of the world to to lose a backup outfielder like him as well and we probably don't even need three New pitchers, we could probably get away with just two. Yeah, Cam um, Madrosian, Greg Holland, interesting. Uh, Tyler Anderson, oh yeah, all the Pirates, perfect. That's just what we want because uh, their formula has <laughs> been so good. Graveman wouldn't be too bad, isn't he a uh, oh, ground Kendall ball pitcher? Graveman, yeah, he is. Yeah, he's extreme ground baller. This guy, he looks like he could be uh, maybe a lot like, say, your Kyle Freelands or your uh, Antonio Senzatellas. He certainly has that same build, could work well. 
yeah, I I would go with Graveman at this point. All right. He's also had a pretty decent season so far. He yeah, he's can having a good year. He can be our long relief pitcher to back up uh to back up uh Senzatella. So you'd have two two extreme ground ball pitchers that we'd be able to to utilize. All right. And then let's call up um you know, let's call up Doyle. Let's give the rookie a chance. All right, yeah. Uh, let's see how he's done in Double A so far. It looks like he's got a 405 ERA, which would be like second best on our team in 13 innings. His strikeout rate is pretty solid. His walk rate is okay, and he has not a lot of home runs, so that's really good news. He's done okay. Double A, from what I remember, is a pitcher's favored league, though, yes. uh, for Hartford. So that's a little bit shaky, but that's okay. I don't mind that. Definitely love to see the lack of home runs allowed. That's going to be big, especially yeah. in cores. Yeah. We're hoping that basically Sensatella, Doyle, and Graveman can help us eat a whole bunch of innings um, for this bullpen to work. Graveman has been pitching a lot for Seattle already, so hopefully he can keep up that successful workhorse kind of build with us. Yep. All right, and are we ready to get back into it? Anything else you want to do? Yeah. Now? I think we're all set. All right. Oh, we won a or did we win a game? I think we won a game there, and now we're not winning games. <laughs> That'll happen a lot. We're not killing a lot of a games. Two game winning streak there, though. Oh, we scored oh. eighteen game eight, eighteen runs against the Brewers there. Yeah, that was good. That's a great game for our offense. Cody Bellinger is running away with the home run lead here. Oh my! And AJ gosh. Pollock is on that list too. No wonder the Dodgers have been so good. All right, another player development update is in. Brendan Rodgers is going way up. That's great news for us. He has been uh, having a decent year. Good. Back up to the three and a half stars. Yep. like to see that. Flint is having some improvement. Zach Veen, that's great news for us. He's having some significant improvement as well. Drew Romo, so our top prospects are having uh, some gains in there. Tovar having... Both of them are going to be... That would be your building blocks for a, a, a rebuild. You build around Romo... And um, and Veen. Yeah. And for the hypothetical future of this organization, that's great news. So it is now the international amateur free agent signing period. Would you like to take a look at some of the players? <laughs> we, we can got? take a look at them really fast. I don't think we're really going to want to sign anybody. Um, unless there's somebody who's like ready to go right now. But I would not imagine. Yeah, the best most player of them are to be this guy. So that's not very overwhelming to me. Uh, is that our scouts approach to him or is that OOTP's? That's our scouts. OTP thinks he's much better. Yeah, oh, that's wait. usually how it is. And he's got a knuckleball. I just noticed that. That's, that's impressive. Funny. I mean, we could go ahead and offer him the five million just to see what he would take if he'd take that. I don't even know if we actually have the money to the budget space to be able to offer him five million. We have the budget space for four point six, which is Going to satisfy Savan, so... Yeah, we can at least see if it would uh, get us the the signing right off the bat. We'll at least try. All right. And, of course, we do have plenty of money set aside for the draft, so I don't think that's going to be a problem financially when we get there. Nah. I mean, not that we'll actually probably do the draft, because we really yeah. don't need to worry about who comes from the draft at this point. That's true. I'm interested to see how some of the top players have uh, developed, though. So Vega is not yeah. going to sign with us. Oh, all right. Well, well that does mean more money available at the deadline if we happen to get yeah. within 400. We're getting close to 400, though. <laughs> I'm going to say we're getting close-ish. Approaching. Uh, I still can't believe the D-backs are over 500 as well as the Giants. That's... um. Yeah, that's been part of it. That problem. doesn't happen usually. Yeah, it's been rough. It has been really rough. Zach Wheeler has not been what we'd hoped him to be at all so far. Uh, Marquez and the rest of the rotation. I mean, John Gray at a 588 ERA leads our rotation. Uh, it's, <laughs> he was it's the worst rough. at one point. He was the worst at one point. He's very much in flux. Carlos Estevez somehow has been the best pitcher on this team, and it's not particularly close in terms of ERA. Wow. Just having a really good season. Yeah, he is having a strong season. That's definitely the breakout we were hoping for, just 
uh, the rest of the pitching took a step back instead. I think it's a combination of cores and our uh, man, Peralta and Marte are two of the highest batting averages in the NL. It's no surprise the <laughs> so D-backs that's why are the D-backs are doing so well. Oh, good grief! Tim LaCastro is on the stolen base leaderboards. Roman Quinn is the stolen base leader. Cody Bellinger has a 1,200 OPS right now. Oh my god! Stands third though. He's got nearly a 1,000. That's not bad. I mean, that's why I got him. We got him just to do the home runs and um. And to get the occasional walk at this point. I'm happy to see Charlie Blackman on the list for a hitting streak. That's, yeah. That at least means that he had a good moment. Yeah, Charlie Blackman had a 19-game hitting streak. That's the longest to date in the season. He's actually not been terrible this year. He's been uh, only a little bit below what you'd expect. Yeah. The power is not there, unfortunately. Like He's... He's not slugging at all, which is no. a bad sign. Especially but... on this team, you need to hit for power. <sighs> but it's okay. Him and Rogers are supposed to just get on the base pass, so that way Story and Stanton and Crone can try to hit a long ball. That's basically our whole entire strategy. Yep, and hope that you can happen to score more than the other guy, which usually involves a 12-13 run game. So Yeah. It sounds about right. It's been an experience so it's time for the draft i assume we're just going to take like a quick look at the pool and then auto draft i mean yeah it's basically the same list that we do every single year yeah. you know what everyone's used to at this point so you know if we get lighter that's probably going to be our first pick because it'd be a good starting pitcher for us um otherwise it's probably going to be a shortstop that you'd be going for at this point yeah so at this point, uh, oddly enough, OSA really loves the second base prospect. I think we're just going to auto draft, though. <laughs> yeah, I'd just go ahead and auto draft. I'd I've love to see who we get, but um, uh, I, I mean, Bliss wouldn't be too too bad, you know. Yeah. If uh, Joshua Baez wouldn't be too bad either, but um, I'm interested to see what the uh, what the game picks up for us. Uh, Kowser's not bad. Fabian's not bad. Uh, there's still some good names in that list, but definitely. Yep, we got just bias depends. by the AI. Okay, bias is a good option for us. I, I I prefer what the Rockies got in real life, which was Montgomery, and then they ended up getting. Um, oh, who did they get the second round? They got um, a starting pitching prospect, who was pretty good. Oh, it was. Hey, uh, got... Was it Moskaito or was he later? Um, I think he was later. Okay. We uh, got Luke Leto in this one, though. That's cool. Uh, yeah, All right. it is very interesting to see Luke Leto. In Tyler Black, Luke Leto. That's not bad. Those definitely, are both good infielders. Yeah, definitely stuck. Tower Black is uh, very well developed at this point, too. Yeah, he's he's borderline ready for, like, double-A. If he has a good season in rookie slash A-ball, you could see him being double-A by the end of the season, triple-A next year, and then into the big leagues immediately afterwards. I think we can meet the demands of all these players. It amounts to only like $2 oh, yeah. million. Dollars, and we oh, have yeah. 11 or so set aside. We, we budgeted, I think, 13 or something. No, yeah, 11.7. You're right. We're going to have a lot of money available at the trade deadline if we want to go in and try to... Probably what we need is at least a 600 winning percentage from the deadline on to make the playoffs, or at least be close to making the playoffs. It yeah. is a very much an uphill battle. But we could also be sellers at the deadline if you want to try to make the farm respectable at the end of the stream. We could see about that. I mean, you could also just go the opposite direction and be like, look, we'll sell and we'll build up the farm. So that way the future version of this team would look good at that point. Yeah. Minor injuries for Stanton and Blackman. Hopefully those do not compound. They're just day to days. Uh, we'll let them play through it. It's just a couple of days. Yeah. I think they'll be okay. Still hunting for that 400 winning percentage. It's not going to help that we're facing the Dodgers, though. I want to see who uh, our All Star was. Let's see. All Star rosters announced. Okay. It was John Carlos Stanton. 
made the All Star team course. for us. Yeah, he is a- as he should have him. been. Yeah, I'd imagine there's really no other option. Yeah. All right. Outside of like maybe a Steves being a relief pitcher, that's really the only person that we should have been sending. Yeah. He's having a great year. Sub 300 ERA in cores with this team is amazing. No one else is below a 400. Yeah. Oh, no, Tommy Doyle's been really good. Like him and Tommy Doyle have actually been performing quite nicely. Um, Graveman's done okay. Sensatella's doing okay as our long relief pitchers. So we definitely seem to have righted a little bit of the ship, at least. Yeah. All right, well, we are approaching the deadline. What do you think we are going to take a look at doing at the deadline? Um, it depends on where you want to take the team at that at that stage. You know, you're hoping that the D-backs and Giants do not continue to develop well down the road. So you're hoping that, you know, maybe if they don't have as good of a season next year, you could conceivably pull into third if you can, you know, build around Stanton and Wheeler and Marquez. Um, there's a lot of free agents that happen to the Rockies at the end of the season. Uh, one of them being Trevor story. We could look at extending Trevor story and making that our trade deadline move. If we wanted to double down for the team, otherwise you're trading Trevor story. You're probably trading CJ crone. Um, you're basically selling the farm and everything to make it somehow work for down the road. So we cannot currently afford to extend Trevor Story. We'd probably have to trade some of the players away that are on contract for next year. I mean, we could probably directly release Ian Desmond, who has a $15 million team option. We would decline with no buyout, and that would free up enough money to extend Story. So Yeah, you could also even alternatively do that at the end of the season if you wanted to right before um, uh, free agency hits. You could then make the decision of, well, do we want to... Instead of, you know, instead of extending story, do we qualify off for him? Do we just get rid of both of their contracts, you know, open up $25 million for the team to, you know, acquire somebody else or just to push all of that into developments? Uh, it just depends on kind of what you want to do because, you know, Blackman's probably going to do his option. So you're going to be on the, you know, you're going to be on the uh, the bill for him still at this point. Um it just depends on what you want to do with the club moving forward. If you're going to continue to do a rebuild with uh, with, with Wheeler and Stanton, because that's a big double duo contract right about there. Um, yep. With it being just a one year thing, it's a lot easier to make decisions like that and not feel the consequences of like, yeah, we've got four more years of Wheeler and he's going to be a 70.0 ERA pitcher for seven years. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Wheeler has not worked out at all like we'd hoped he would, which is a shame. No, no, he has not. So are we doing anything at this deadline, or are we going to stand pat and hope that we can either miraculously make the playoffs or have some clearer vision for where this team would be going in a hypothetical future? Um, because of the fact that I don't think we'll get much for Wheeler or Stanton until free agency... Um, you really aren't going to be able to trade them because we're the club that had all the money to be able to acquire players. So um, Wheeler and Stanton probably have to stay put. They probably wouldn't get us that much in, in terms of a deal. Story, Story would be the only person that could possibly get you much, but he's also a free agent at the end of the year, so the AI really doesn't want to give up too, too much for him. You're really not going to get the return that you'd like to see uh, if we do offer him up and around. He also hasn't had the greatest season in the world, so I don't think he's going to have a whole lot of temptation to acquire at this point. So you kind of have to just go with it, and then you'd be doing a lot of stuff in the off season to you know make decisions about the team um, and figure out the direction that you'd want to go. So I, I would actually stay put. All right, and we just lost Senzatella for the season. <laughs> of course, the game rewards us with an injury. Well, so, I mean, that, that opens up a spot for uh, Rollison if he's not injured. Yeah, Rollison um, does appear to be pretty much ready to go. So we can call him right up. He hasn't had a great year in AAA, but, no, but he would be the backup probably... long lever, so he'd prefer that anyways. AAA is a very not friendly environment to pitchers as well, so it's probably not... Oh, yeah, it's... 
especially Albuquerque. Albuquerque actually is higher elevation than uh, than Denver. Really dry in Albuquerque too. It's cold and dry, and the ball is flying everywhere. Yep. That's not bad. I, I don't mind having Rawlson up here and try him out. See if he can do anything. Yeah, we are going to hope for a great rookie year from Rawlson. I cannot believe that Peralta is sustaining a 322 batting average. <laughs> do we want to send Graveman to the injured list with a one to two week strain, or are we going yep. to just... We can yep. do that. We can call back up El Monte in the meanwhile. All right. Oh, no, El Monte's injured. Never mind. Oh yeah, what he's, do you know? He's, and he's, he's gone out for, for the season. Yeah, he's done for the months. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, so uh, just, uh, probably Jero at this point. Then we'll, we'll do uh, Diaz. All right. Yeah, that's uh, not what we wanted to see at all. So the no. injuries have started to come down like hammers and try to get us that first overall draft pick next year. <laughs> <laughs> which is difficult to do because we've got to compete with the pirates and the rangers the rangers are the rangers yeah winning that relay race 35 games out of first in the al west and the d-backs and giants are just not giving up their 500 winning percentage ways which is yeah. so ridiculous graveman's back so i assume that means we're sending diaz back down uh, unless Diaz had a really good little split. Oh, no, he uh, had a 736 us. ERA. He's yeah, I can, he can go back down. <laughs> but the, the irony is that it's not any worse than the rest of our guys. He's got to be DFA'd. So. Yeah. Oh, we could DFA him. That's not a problem. He does have a $1.1 million salary. So, again, if he gets claimed, that does free up some more money for us. Yeah, Rollison has been one of our better pitchers so far. His ERA is only a 6.0. <laughs> Mark Kessler, no. Marquez seems to be turning it around at least, so that's a good sign. Yeah, Marquez has a sub-500 ERA. He's on pace for 5 war with a 438 or 483 ERA. Almost 200 innings. That's that's really all yeah. you can ask for from him is that, look, just make sure you get, you know, here. 6 or 7 innings every single start, please. Zach Wheeler has been just a complete disaster for us this season. <laughs> the rates aren't terrible, but he's not putting anything together. He just together. doesn't he doesn't get very far into games. So the inning eating version of Wheeler we did not get. He's had a 378 BABIP over the year and it's been sustained. So I don't know what wow. that's saying about him, but I'm not thrilled about that one. Just completely unlucky in every single regard. Ooh, there's story out for six to seven weeks. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that one stings. That's going to hurt because he had just started. looks like he was just really starting to get like uh, get hot again. Yeah. Who are we calling up to replace? Uh, him? It's got to be Owings at this point. Yeah. Are we sticking him at shortstop? Yeah. Unless we have Rogers uh, as a better option at shortstop at this point. I think it's about the same whether you go with one at shortstop, one at second base. Yeah. And it, I don't think it will make too much of a difference for a team that's like 60 games out of first place <laughs> right now because the Dodgers are still over 700. Yep. Yeah, at this point, you're just, it's like, yeah, so you're going to like lose maybe, a, what, one or two extra games that you're the expected Padres to lose? The would have won any other division, and they're 10 games out of oh first. Oh my gosh. That's just brutal. I can't imagine being a Padres player at that point, and just <laughs> the disappointment. Just the, just the, the despair of like being like, yes, we're having one of the best seasons of our franchise's history, and then you've got the Dodgers with one of the best, you know, finishes in MLB history. It's like, how do you win? CJ Crone is doing an excellent Chris Davis impersonation, batting below 200 <laughs> with uh, over 30 home runs. We're getting bad CJ Crone, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, we're getting very bad CJ Crone. Oh, Armand Marquez improved his, uh, it looks like control rating a little bit. Good. Starting to show the signs of his ace ace status at this point. A little bit of green scattered throughout. So Tommy Doyle is probably our most notable improvement here. Yeah, he's still been one of our best pitchers. His ERA is only a Good. 633. 
We just had our mm. rosters expand, so we can call up two more players if you can think of anybody you'd like to see at the major league level. Um, I'd bring back up uh, Diaz, actually. The extreme right. ground baller with good movement. Um, I actually would bring him up at this point. And then I'd probably bring up Daza to be our backup outfielder. All right. Since yep. we technically dropped Tapia. Although I think Tapia's in AAA, so... I think technically uh, we traded him for... Oh, that's right. For Graveman. Graveman. Yeah. So so Diaz is your is your backup. Uh, Daza, sorry, is your backup outfielder for all of the outfield, except for, I mean, whatever Hilliard's really good at, I think, which is, I think, left, I think. But... Uh, Hilliard's It'd still be okay with, with having both of them trade off bench time um, and backing up time. They're both very good outfielders. Good defense, good speed. Yeah, Daza's definitely a very solid player to have on our Major League roster. He's probably a slightly better version of what we saw earlier with... Um, um, the guy we traded away. I cannot... Tapia. I yes. totally blanked on his name for a minute there. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very ironic that some of our best performances of the year have come from Connor Joe and to a lesser extent, Garrett Ham. <laughs> uh, not really Garrett Ham. Yes. Uh, Elias Brandon Diaz, Rogers? though, batting over 300. Yeah, Brendan Rodgers has been. Or Garrett Hampson. No, Connor Joe has been good. Brendan Rodgers has been awesome, though. You're right about that. He's definitely been the big breakout of this season and would be a guy we'd absolutely be looking to build around for a future yeah. version of this team. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He he'd probably be either at second base or third base if you didn't want to keep McMahon. Um, McMahon's getting the homers around, so that's a good sign. But the batting average just really isn't there still, unfortunately. Given how bad it was at the start of the season, I'm impressed that he's got it up as high as he has. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that slugging is respectable at 453. That's actually decent. He's on pace for 206 strikeouts, though, which I'm sure is a oh. common theme across our offense. The strikeouts yeah. Are really high. Yeah, I, I think a lot of our players are very strikeout prone, unfortunately. Yeah, we've got a couple of guys on pace for 200, including our catcher, Tyler Flowers, on pace for over 200 strikeouts. Yep. Flowers kind of... Kind of was a last ditch effort to get something better. Not sure if that was a good move or not. You I definitely still... are. You're you're just you're you're waiting for Romo. You really are. Yeah. There's really nobody better than Romo to to do the catching job. Down goes Chris Owings, our replacement for our <laughs> injured shortstop. So, oh good grief. Um, I mean, we can utilize Rogers at shortstop and then have um, um, Hampson go play second. All or right. we could have Hampson go play shortstop by himself at this point. Uh, either or would work just fine. Yeah, all right. I think for simplicity's sake, we'll just stick Hampson in a shortstop. He seems to be at least decently made to play the yeah, position. Yeah, he'll at least be able to play the position okay. And he's I'd probably call up. Uh, I'd probably call up Welker at this point. All right, yeah, Welker is absolutely looking like he's made a name for himself in AAA. He's hitting, oh, yeah. yeah, very well in AAA. 861 OPS is very strong. And he's a leader, so maybe he'll make the dugout a little <laughs> less problematic. I'm sure we have a grumpy. terrible chemistry. Oh, no, everybody's content somehow. I'm not sure how there isn't a lot of uh, unhappy players with a 350 team, but maybe that's just what they expected coming in. Yeah. It was the expectation of, look, we're going to be a really rough team, guys. It's the National League West. What are we going to do about that? Uh, let's just try to be respectable. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is what anybody was hoping for, but also, oh, man, and there goes Graveman. Aww. And Graveman's been really good. 307 ERA since we acquired him. Nice. That's good. And that was with a really rough stretch at one point. Are we calling somebody up to replace him, or are we just going to ride it out at this um, point? We should. We probably should. Oh, man, we're finally getting into like the now the, the area of our depth that is just like, yeah, there's nothing left, guys. There's just nothing left. Like, like what are we supposed to do now? Um, 
Derek Rodriguez probably is the uh, the next call up. Yeah, I'd imagine he certainly is on that list. Let's see uh, what he can do here. Uh, he's not as bad as I imagined he would be. No, he's actually not too terrible. He's just, he's a fly ball pitcher with not a lot of movement. He's going to get destroyed by, yeah, um, rough by time Coors. In Albuquerque. Very rough time in Albuquerque. He did decently. If he can get the, con- if he can get the walks under control, he's actually not that bad. Yeah, I mean, factoring in the fact that a 588 ERA is probably, like, second best on our team, <laughs> he was not that bad. Could be a lot worse, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> You've now got Stan That's now. a bad sign when that's what you're saying to make yourself feel better. It could be a lot worse. Stan is now out for a week. Are we going to let him okay, write a this week's, out? A week's or? not bad. Yeah. I, I'd give him just the week off, but I wouldn't call anybody up. I would just wait. All right. Um, we'll just you could even go week. into the player strategy. Well, you can just let him just sit there because the, the AI is not going to use him if he's red. Yeah, um, yeah. Or you can just give him, yeah, the nine days off in the bench. And that'll work just fine. He won't play then. Dare I say it, but we're actually winning games. Oh, you're quite right. We are winning games. We're up to we are, almost a 375 winning percentage. We had a bit of a rough middle of the uh, around around the trade. De- oh, we hit the Phillies. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they made us pay for acquiring Zach Wielder. That's for sure. Yeah, that uh, that well, wasn't very fair. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't think that the Zach Wheeler trade was... I can't imagine that anybody acquires a marquee pitcher like that who's proven to be successful and healthy, and then he goes on and puts up a 7 ERA year. I mean, that's like yeah. Lucas yeah, Giolito I, season 1. I was, you know, I was thinking maybe at worst he's doing like a 5 ERA. You know, maybe he's doing like 180 innings, you know, 15 losses maybe at most, but not not above that. Tyler Flowers is done for the year. Yep, he's gonna have to go on the shelf. So, so uh, <laughs> gosh, I don't even know who we have in AAA at this point. We've got, uh, I guess Dom. I guess, yeah, I guess we pull up Dom Nunez again now. He's not too too bad. Um, you just kind of hope you have better. Um, uh-huh. but Dom will work, you know. Well, the we'll good probably news let, is uh, uh, Diaz has been hitting well on the bench, so. Yeah, I'd probably give Diaz the starting role at this point then. Even though I think Dom is actually a better hitter than Diaz. That could be. Dom had a pretty solid season in AAA. He had uh, an above average hitting numbers. His on base percentage was nearly 400. That's not bad. The eye discipline's coming out really nicely. Um. We could put two I'd numbers as well, because Dom is a lefty and uh, Diaz is yeah, a lefty. Yeah, we could do it that way. Yeah, yeah that would work. All right. So we go Nunez against righties and then Diaz against lefties. Yeah. And hopefully that'll increase our offense a little bit. Having Maybe. Nunez, yeah. Because Flowers was definitely not hitting. No. He was a issue behind the... Or when he had a, a bat in his hand. Yes, but I... The fact that he had 70 catcher ability and our pitching has been this bad makes me wonder what's going to happen now that he's gone. <laughs> oh, I, I think we've just gotten the one simulation where nothing quite works well. Um, yep. Oh, man. John Forearm Gray. inflammation. Come on, John. That's the last thing I want to start seeing is heading sh- elbow and forearm inflammation. That is not a good sign. Yeah, who are we going to call up to replace him at this point? Oh, gosh. Um, Who do we have in AAA at this point that's uh, ready to go? Santos, Mujica, we could let Sensatella Cole. rejoin the rotation, and then that would yeah. allow us to bring up just a relief pitcher. But which... Sensatella is injured, as is Graveman. And oh, you're right. He has the have. inflammation. We could put Rollison in the rotation. Or <laughs> yeah, Rollison has to go to the rotation for a little bit of time. All right, and who's coming up from AAA now? Uh, probably Santos. Yeah, it's not pretty right now. Oh no, this is uh, this is definitely the worst case scenario. 
Yeah, I don't think you could. Uh, maybe we'll survive without giving up 100 losses? Maybe? Uh, we're about to hit that mark. <laughs> yeah, we're at 99. We can't lose another game, so it's going to be very Oh, my tough. God. And we have, of course, the back. Giants for the next two games, of course. Uh, uh, who's going down for Owings? Um... Probably Welker at this point. You'd probably be like, yeah, we played him for a little bit of time, but he can go back down before next off season. Welker ends up probably being your starting third baseman next year since we've had such struggles struggles with um with McMahon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has just not worked out at all. Is Owen starting a shortstop over Hampson? Um I think so, yeah. Owings has probably hit a little bit better than Hampson this year so far. Yeah, Hampson doesn't have as much of time at sh uh, uh, to bat to make up for it, but I do prefer Owings' bat over Hampson's. Yeah, Owings looks like he is definitely going to be uh, the better hitter here, especially when it comes to that power, which is really where we're making our offense work. We have been eliminated and we're for a while. We did eclipse the 100 <laughs> loss mark. Uh, this is not quite as bad as some of the... Oh, man, and there goes Diaz for the rest of the year. Yeah, that injury uh -huh. list is starting to look real pretty. Lots yep. of nice, beautiful red and orange. Now the game's giving us all of the injuries. Making up I, I wouldn't time. even worry about it at this point. We only yeah. have three more games. And it, we still got like plenty of pitchers on the roster. It, we had 28 guys before the injury, so... Good news is there's a lot of green for our prospects on the player development update. Yeah. A lot of future potential for a team that is uh, definitely not winning now. Yeah, that's the <laughs> there's certainty of that statement. This is not a team that is winning at all. Uh, two major acquisitions and at least 100 losses to cap off the season. I did not imagine this going this badly at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I I could have foreseen this a little bit. I mean, it's definitely been worse than I imagined it could have been. But yeah, this is... I, I would say this is kind of common for your first season in Colorado. If you're trying to do a rebuild or even even a win now situation, you're just you're at the mercy of whatever um, the AI can do. It doesn't really matter who's sent down at this point for Gray since... Uh... Probably Santos at that point. Yeah, Santos is probably the one. So we finish at 57 wins. Now, that's what the real-life D-backs are looking to accomplish at this point. Um, yep. So we've basically swapped places with them. Yep, we did. All right, story's back. So I assume we're sending down... Um, Zaza? Would it be Daz at this point? Yeah, that is who we called up, I believe. How did he do? Yeah, he was really good his brief time. OPS good. over 1,000. Oh, he did really nicely. Yeah. Oh, and he's yeah, got to be waived, so I can't imagine we send him down to that point. Oh, yeah, I won't waive him, unfortunately. We'd, you'd prefer to give him another chance next year, so probably... Um... Well, at this point, it'd probably be a relief pitcher because you're not going to worry about people like uh, Kinley. Yeah. Um, you're just going to throw them. <laughs> I'm going to give him down to AAA at this point if he can. Yeah, I'm. I want to see who wins this Dodgers Padres series. Yeah, it's a very interesting one. Padres up two to one. That's good news. We don't want to see the Dodgers uh, win the World Series, and the Dodgers pull it off though. And what about these Royals? The Royals are in the playoffs. Why are the Royals in the playoffs? Let's find out. I've actually seen the what Royals is with perform the simulation? really well at times. <laughs> so they had really good pitching from Carlos Hernandez, of all people, although in the bullpen, but he's in the rotation for the playoffs. They acquired Jimmy Nelson from the Dodgers. Wait, no, they got him from the Phillies, who got him from the Dodgers interesting and uh he wow well, i don't know what's going on i don't know how they were so good i'm guessing the offense uh merrifield had a great year 
Isbell was outstanding as a rookie for them. Jorge Soler was everything we hoped John Carlos Stanton would be. Carlos they Stanton just had everything solid. clicked for a yeah. season. Everybody is doing exactly what you would have expected them to do at their best. Yeah, exactly. Modesty close to 300. Perez, you know, 24 home runs. They've brought up Bobby Witt Jr. He's done manageably well. The Witt bullpen Jr. has been solid oh, and reliable. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've definitely they've had to shuffle some of their starters around. It seems like they've got um, they've got Porcello in the bullpen right now, which is kind of rough. Um, and Danny Duffy's down there now officially too, but I, it's hard to imagine this team ever being able to do that, but they've pulled it off. Good, good hitting. looks like it's a, a clutch batting situation for the Royals. It does certainly look like they had a really strong offense and a decent, uh, pitching staff. They definitely had, uh, the kind of luck that a good lucky team would have. I think that, uh, yeah. we, that if we'd had that kind of luck, we probably would have been in contention too. There, the Dodgers go with the, the hey, look, they beat the World Series. Good for them. <laughs> Your 2021 World Series, the Los Angeles Dodgers. <laughs> oh, oh, can they do it? Are they Come Royals on, Royals. actually going to win the World Series? It looks like. They did. The Kansas City Royals are your 2021 World Series <laughs> champions. So, who predicted this, guys? Who predicted this? Out of out of our simulation, the Royals would win the World Series. Yes. Nobody expected that. I don't think anybody expected that we would go under, uh, what was it, 350? About 350 winning percentage either, but things happened the dodgers won 113 games the padres nearly won 100 despite that yeah that was a crazy simulation <laughs> oh good grief anyways i believe we have accomplished everything we set out to do except maybe on the level <laughs> of success uh i don't think that this was necessarily the ideal season that we were hoping for uh, I definitely hope we could do this again sometime. It's been a lot of fun, even if uh, it's not the outcome we'd hoped for. I definitely enjoyed it. And I do appreciate you taking time out of your day to come on and uh, talk to people about yourself and everything that you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you guys all for coming out and listening to Alex and I watch the Rockies lose uh, 102 <laughs> games in this, or 105 games in this season. Oof. So I will see you guys some other time, probably Monday when I stream next. And Alex, I'll talk to you later. Thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. All right, we are off. Thank you for coming out. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you some other time.